advice. The opinions and views of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Tutis Uncut. I'm your host, Buddy Kunana. Now, in this show, we talk about everything under the sun, and tonight's topic is about arts. You know, folks, tonight is a very special evening because we're kicking off on GNN, the, for the first time on Philippine TV, we are actually kicking off the UNESCO's International Arts Education Week, which is starting tomorrow in different locations all around the world. And tonight, you're going to talk about, we're going to meet some very interesting personalities who have been at the forefront of arts education for many decades, for many years. And we're going to talk about how art, more than being just a mere flight of fancy and hobby for many, can actually be a potent force for social change and transformation. And joining us on the set here in GNN, on Philippines Uncut, is none other than Ms. Cecil Guidotto Alvarez. Good evening, Ms. Alvarez, and Good welcome evening, to Philippines Buddy. Uncut. And to your fans. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an honor to have you here, Hope, because um, especially for a topic like this, because when it comes to arts and arts education, few have the credentials that you have <laughs> over the years and your, 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 um, your dedication to this field is admirable. But uh, please, tell, us, tell well, the, the viewers about yourself. About myself? Yes, <laughs> I, I mean, for, for those who don't know uh, yet who, and, and there aren't many who don't know about Ms. Alvarez, <laughs> but for those who don't know, tell us a bit, who is Cecil Guidotti Alvarez? Well, I'm, um, I've been uh, in the arts for more than 50 years, and so you can see the white hair. <laughs> um, we founded PETA, uh, which is the Philippine Educational Theater Association, and um, we also worked in exile out of uh, La Mama Theater, which uh, pioneered the off-Broadway off uh, movement and worked with uh, ethnic cultural uh, minorities. So you have uh, uh, Filipina, Mexican now, who we're all cheering for the American idol. Jessica Sanchez. Uh, ethnic uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> cultural minorities were our concern. And then, of course, um, now under a restored democracy, we're uh, pushing for really um, accessing arts education to vulnerable groups, which we call cultural caregiving. Yes. So uh, we try to um, give this uh, very meaningful experience to uh, differently abled uh, people under difficult circumstances in trauma, whether they're in prison or refugees of armed conflict or economic, uh, ecologi economic and ecological disasters, yes, yes. Uh, uh, sick people in the hospitals. I mean, uh, arts has such a healing power as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, it's a um, dynamic possibility for therapy, for addressing uh, uh, well, confusion, crisis yeah, yes. is uh, really very, as you use the word, potent. No? It's a dynamic uh, force. Yeah. And uh, for values education, it's also very important because that's what the International Arts Education Week is going to do, make a difference yes. in uh, harnessing or like calling to arms artists, people in media, people in social action who yeah. are artists to be like a creative army yeah. to uh, fuse in their diverse expressions and disciplines this um, desire to help confront a survival issue, climate change, yeah. disaster risk reduction. Yeah. And this is really the objective of the UNESCO International Arts Education Week. Yes. But, but how did this uh, happen? How did this, I mean, well, this is the first International Arts Education Week. Yes. How did this come about? We're elated because it's like a dream come true. It's, uh, it has come to pass. Um, actually, we've been working on this area of work and uh, luckily, UNESCO has recognized us as uh, UNESCO Artists for Peace, and then recently as UNESCO Dream Center. 
And so we were invited in the first World Arts Education Conference that was sponsored by UNESCO, hosted by the government of Portugal, to demonstrate uh, a process of special arts education. And we brought in our team of Art Savers Ensemble. Uh, we had our artist teacher, yeah. like uh, Frank Rivera, joining us. And what happened is um, uh, they made an impact. Uh, and uh, in the process, we advocated for a World Arts Education Week. That was 2006. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know how the process is in the international community as well as in any bureaucracy <laughs> nationally or what. There's, it's yeah. a slow process. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to nag, to persevere, uh, to demonstrate its viability. And the second World uh, Arts uh, Education Conference was held in Seoul, in which Korea, is nearby yes. in yeah. Korea. And there, uh, together with um, uh, then NCCA Chairman Dr. Vilma Labrador, who was in Dep Ed, yes. uh, we joined the ministerial meeting because I was then also in NCCA and I, UNESCO commissioner. And we pushed, I spoke again, uh, reiterated the value of an arts education consciousness week that can sustain memory, attention, action in between four years, yes, you yes. know, it's a quadriennale conference. Yes. So it was adopted, uh, the plenary applauded it, the Korean government uh, accepted it as part of a resolution on a complement to the Seoul agenda of arts education development. Yes. And from that, from that uh, nucleus of activity... This was declared now. Yes. First, because it was only approved at the UNESCO General Conference last year. So it was declared as the uh, last week of May. Because May is, is very important also to UNESCO. May 21, tomorrow, is yes. Cultural Diversity Day. Okay. And then May 22 is Biological Cult Diversity Day. Wow. So we are fusing them synergizing these two seemingly different concerns into one concept, biocultural diversity protection. That is a big, all-encompassing statement. Yeah, and that's, uh, statement. we feel that is the key to sustainable development. Uh, you cannot just uh, worry about, of course, our ecosystems, but uh, the whole room of heritage and traditions yeah, and yeah. using the expertise of our artists. And you know how great our artists are. Yeah, Anywhere yeah. in the world, they're second to none. How do you fuse all of that into a common goal? When you, saw, when you talk about heritage, these are big words. And, and yeah. multi multi well, We're interdisciplinary, in interdisciplinary, yes. And, and multilingual. Too. Multilingual, <laughs> multiracial, multicultural. How do you now fuse this into one common uh, message or one common position? Well, wow. um, Later on, we'll give you an example. <laughs> but the thing to do is like multitasking, yes. you know. Uh, and the idea that uh, UNESCO itself has changed and it says we're cross disciplinary. Even if we're communications, education, culture, and science, uh, we've got to merge them together. You can't. You know, you can't separate, you've got to synthesize. Yes, yes. And that's what we're doing. And you can see uh, that the content, uh, for instance, we have performances which says, agony, death, and resurrection of the forest and the seas. You have the lament of the ocean. We have um, a rap song on garbage recycling and composing. So it's possible. And we use soap opera in uh, Balintatao. Yes. Uh, so and it's basically to use the arts and use, fuse it with pop culture yes. and, 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 and different uh, cultural forms and to reach leaders, to reach the masses. Right, and history heritage based, meaning to say uh, you're grounded, you're able to provide a mirror for your identity as a nation. You're able to give a sense of appreciation for your patrimony, for your wealth of heritage, our habitat, our 
the beautiful environment that we mustn't destroy. I guess when people are more aware of this and they, they yeah. treasure what they have, then right. they will actually care for the environment, yes. care for each other, care for uh, society. We are wealthy. Mm -hmm. uh, we have all of these natural mm -hmm. resources. We have all this wealth of talent, human resources. Yes. And, and uh, what we were showing, that's why it was recognized by UNESCO, is that we could show that what we consider as damaged human resources can be transformed, can be recycled physically into responsible uh, members of society. Yes, you know, physically blind, challenged, yeah. mentally challenged, yeah. uh, people in difficult circumstances, suicidal yes. people. You'll be amazed how if you deal sensitively, relevantly, and have a compassion and a caring, that's why we call it cultural caregiving. That's the whole root. Uh, you don't just perform or you don't just do workshops for ego. Oh, it's nice, somebody's gonna clap for me, etc. But you're it's for the caring. Good, good. It's for yeah, the it's a good of society. Yeah, it's yeah. you're like a classroom. Yes. Now yeah. Ms. Alvarez, uh, this UNESCO Arts Education Week mm -hmm. seems like a very big affair. Tell us about the mechanics. Like, is it going to happen in one place? Yeah. Is it going to be centered in one one country? What what, what, well, what is the just biggest like, highlight? Just like in any day, uh, mm -hmm. but this is a week. Um, because it's a UNESCO approved resolution, countries with UNESCO commissions are bound to uh, execute it. And uh, however, the inaugural you know, event will be in Paris okay. on the 23rd, okay. uh, where the event will have an inaugural there. But we're kicking off with a very important, uh, uh, we call it tricontinental dialogue uh, among artists. Uh, and that is by connectivity. Uh, you'll be amazed we can connect with artists in uh, Colombia, in Kenya, in UAE, <laughs> in Paris. In real time. In yeah. real time, and uh, we're going to be, uh, in a sense, co-moderated out of Jakarta, because that is the UNESCO Bureau Chief yes. uh, Office for Asia Pacific, Dr. Yes. Hubert Gishen. But this is all with the blessing of the first woman Director General of UNESCO who's presiding. And that is uh, Dr. Irina Bukova. So this tricontinental link, link, uh, mm -hmm. virtual link, when will this happen? Uh, this will happen on the 22nd in Manila, but it's 21 in Colombia. Uh, it's in different countries where we're connecting. It's, it's actually zones. starting in different time zones, 21 to 22nd. Uh, Cultural Diversity Day and Biodiversity Day in a sense, uh, synergized as one. So in all these places, UNESCO will have different activities. Yes, or culture, yes, or the education. ITI, yes. because I think you've met um, the Director General of ITI, uh, Buddy. Um, we, it has a membership of 100 nations. So the community of artists uh, will be doing their own thing. Even here in the Philippines, okay. we've gathered, you see, uh, Dep Ed is involved, uh, Brother Armin's uh, office, uh, Ched, um, Chairman Tati Likwanan, uh, Tesda, where uh, also uh, NCCA, some of their activities are converged in a calendar of events uh, mm -hmm. that will mm -hmm. be presented to Paris as a Philippine panorama of um, artistic educational activities. So we're highlighting uh, a process. We are uh, connecting to the other continents and working out um, cooperative uh, programs. Yes. Um, yes. Now, by linking these, you know, artists united from mm -hmm. three that's different it. continents, that's a, that's by linking nice them, what do you hope to achieve? Uh, because the artists can touch conscience and uh, really broaden mindsets or shift mindsets. And the artist, as I say, is the creative army for defense. Uh, no bombs, <laughs> no guns, 
it's really hard. And when something appeals to the heart, then, then you act. the capacity to change, yeah, the your potential is really, is really there. Right. You're motivated uh, to do something. Yeah. And that's what's important. We have to act. Like this issue on climate change, if we don't act now, uh, we can't wait for Godot. It can't be postponed. Because you can see we're being overwhelmed with all of these disasters. It's a question of human survival. Yes. Now, early you mentioned a group, the Dream, the Dream, the Earth Savers. Yeah, the they, they were recognized as UNESCO Dream Center. Who are the Earth Savers, and what, what is the composition of this group? Well, uh, it's really involving us performers, differently able children, physically uh, challenged. So yeah, physically challenged, in economically handicapped in a sense, because we, we merge them with street children, out of school youth, as well as um, indigenous youth. Uh, we want to be inclusive and to show that you can integrate, you can harmonize, uh, no divisions, but a sense of belonging, you know? So um, we, we have uh, blind uh, uh, children, uh, crippled, armless, yeah. uh, and mentally stand, challenged. They've performed all over the world yes. under your tutelage. They, they've <laughs> been uh, in the UN. Uh, they've been actually, uh, we're doing this as a prelude to Rio Plus 20. Yes. And uh, you'll be amazed. They, they were in Rio, uh, but uh, these are yeah. new ones now, but the old ones. Already. And I understand that there are three. Uh, Earth Savers yes, with here. you today, yes. and they will give us a special uh, number to close our first segment. Uh -huh. And uh, he here they come now. Can you tell us a bit about their well, background? Well, you must um, uh, understand that uh, they're all blind, but uh, you'll see their confidence and capability. Yeah. Uh, what are they going to sing? That's what's going to interest you, hopefully. Uh, you've been singing when you were a kid, Magtani May Dibiro. Sure. They're Classic. shifting that. Yes. Uh, and also they're saying, you know, it's uh, the UN year for cooperatives and sustainable energy. So they'll say that, ang tingting na walis pag nag-iisa, baliwala. Pero pag pinagbuklod mo, that's when the force comes. Okay, so let's, let, okay. let's hear them. So there's Malin, there's... Uh, um, uh, Maricor and there's uh, Camille. Okay, girls, okay. Okay. take it away. Kung tayo'y magtatanim, dadami ang pagkain, gigin hawa ang buhay, yayaman pa itong bayan. Magtanim, magtanim, meron kang aalihin. Magtanim, magtanim, meron kang insasain. Sa kubo ka matulog, katawan mo'y lulusog. Sa bukid manirahan, kay linis ng amihan. Ang sabi ng Diyos natin ay dapat nating sundin. Ang lahat ng kakanin sa pawis manggagaling. Halina magsikap upang umunlad Sa bayan maglingkod ng tapat Pag nagsikap tayo unan Para sa araw ng bukas Para sa araw ng bukas Tayong Pilipino kung magsasama-sama Lahat nating naisin, abot kaya na Kung sama-sama ay kayang kaya Kung sama-sama ay kayang kaya Alimang kalsada ay di malilinis Kung nag-iisa ang tingting na <laughs> very, good, very, good. Okay. very well done. So guys, don't go away because uh, in the second segment we'll talk more about UNESCO's International Arts Education Week. Stay tuned.
people under difficult circumstances in trauma, whether they're in prison or refugees of armed conflict or economic, uh, ecologi economic and ecological disasters, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, sick people in the hospitals. I mean, uh, arts has such a healing power as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, it's a um, dynamic possibility for therapy, for addressing uh, uh, well, confusion, crisis yeah, yes. is uh, really very, as you use the word, potent. You know, it's a dynamic uh, force. Yeah. And uh, for values education, it's also very important because that's what the international... We advise the opinions and views of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Putis Uncut. I'm your host, Buddy Kunana. Now, in this show, we talk about everything under the sun. And tonight's topic is about art. And if you have the credentials that you have <laughs> over the years and your, 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 um, your dedication to this field is admirable. But uh, please, tell, us, tell well, the, the viewers about yourself. About myself? Yes. <laughs> I mean, for, for those who don't know yet uh, who, and, and there aren't many who don't know about Ms. Alvarez, <laughs> but for those who don't know, tell us a bit, who is Cecil Guidotti Alvarez? Well, I'm, um, I've been uh, in the arts for more than 50 years, and so you can see the white hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, we founded PETA, uh, which is the Philippine Educational Theater Association. And um, we also worked in exile out of uh, La Mama Theater, which uh, pioneered the off-Broadway off uh, movement and worked with uh, ethnic cultural uh, minorities. So you have uh, uh, Filipina, Mexican now, who we're all cheering for the American idol. Jessica Sanchez. Uh, ethnic uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> cultural minorities were our concern. And then, of course, um, now under a restored democracy, we're uh, pushing for really um, accessing arts education to vulnerable groups, which we call cultural caregiving. Yes. So uh, we try to um, give this uh, very meaningful experience to uh, differently abled. Uh. You know, folks, tonight is a very special evening because we're kicking off on GNN the, for the first time on Philippine TV we are actually kicking off the UNESCO's International Arts Education Week, which is starting tomorrow in different locations all around the world. And tonight, you're going to talk about, we're going to meet some very interesting personalities who have been at the forefront of arts education for many decades, for many years. And we're going to talk about how art, more than being just a mere flight of fancy and hobby for many, can actually be a potent force for social change and transformation. And joining us on the set here in GNN on Philippines Uncut is none other than Ms. Cecil Guidotti Alvarez. Good evening, Ms. Alvarez, and Good welcome evening, to Philippine Uncut. Uh, and to your fans. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an honor to have you here, Hob, because um, especially for a topic like this, because when it comes to arts and arts education,